This is Marga Hugo, the president of the Rotary Club of Chicago, and I am very happy to get this meeting started. Do we hear a bell ringing? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Um, well, I am planning to introduce here um, our uh, uh, co-chair of the programs committee, uh, Don Garner. And I am not sure if Don is here already, um, but uh, um, Paul, uh, Don was, I'm sure he's going to be here in any minute, but he is going to, um, was planning to introduce you. I understand you have been the honorary consul. So I'm going to do a little bit on his behalf. Uh, you have been the honorary consul of Belgium for quite a while here, and we are very much looking forward to hearing uh, your story with Chicago, how you came here, uh, and what is the story of the oldest consulate in the city of Chicago. So, <laughs> in other words, the floor is yours. Good evening, and by protocol, I will say Guten bonsoir, guten Abend, in the three official languages of the Kingdom of Belgium. Um, thank you for having me and hosting me on the Rotary One Club of Chicago. Uh, through Don Garner, many members of the Consular Corps have attended that event in person when we could or in via remotely when um, when we uh, we we couldn't with the, the, the pandemic. Uh, I know that Tamra has a, a few slides available, or maybe. Um, Yes, merci. Thank you. So, of course, this is, you know, your typical image of Belgium, you know, or national colors, or fries, Magritte, and the Brussels sprouts. It's um, when we use those, usually don't need to put the word Belgium. It's um, <laughs> quite well known in the U.S. and in other parts of the world. I thought... I would spend maybe three minutes to do a Belgium 101. I know that everybody is well versed in international affairs here, but uh, you know we we are a recent country. The Kingdom of Belgium really is independent since 1830. We got our independence after the war of independence with the Netherlands. It lasted six days, so they weren't very attached to us, I suppose, and uh, we. Um, we became a, an independent kingdom. But as a nation or as a name, the Belgarum from Julius Caesar, uh, we existed for a long, long time. Uh, what is today Belgium has been part of different um, countries. We were part after the Roman Empire, we were part of the Frank kingdom, we were part of the Carolingian kingdom, and then we um, we became uh, part of Burgundy, and then through succession and inheritance, we became part of Spain, the kingdom of Spain for two centuries, and then we became Austrians, in same dynasty, different country. Then we had the French Revolution, war and invasion, and the Napoleon Empire. And after 1815, Waterloo, we were given to the Netherlands to thank the Prince of Orange for his support of the Allied army. That's how it became the kingdom of the Netherlands, including Belgium and Netherlands, until 1830. And since then, we have been an independent uh, country. Belgium is a federal kingdom, a federal state. We are divided in three regions. Brussels capital region, Flanders, Dutch speaking, and Wallonia, French speaking. Brussels is officially bilingual, Dutch and French. English is widely spoken as well. We also have three communities. Those are, in the, in the case of Flanders, it's the same territory because it is the same language. It's cultural communities based on the language uh, spoken in that region. We have the Brussels Wallonia region, and then we have a minority. We have an Eastern Belgium where German is the official language. There are about 75,000 people out of 11 million Belgians, as the census of 2020 said. 
We have 10 provinces and 539 municipalities. Three US ambassadors ago to Belgium, that ambassador make a point to visit every single municipality with his wife every weekend. He was on the road. And that is actually stunning because that includes me. Most Belgium have not been to every single municipality. But Belgium, as you know it, is also part you know, of larger association. In 1921, we are celebrating 100 years of the economic union between Belgium and the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg. That was actually unheard of to have two independent nations uniting their currency, the Belgian franc and the Luxembourg franc in 1921. In 1944-1947, we were at the base of the Benelux together, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And of course, that led to the building of the early European Union, or as we called it, the common market, with France, Italy, and Germany joining us in 1957. We are also the headquarters of NATO, um, since 1967, when General de Gaulle asked the, the Alliance to leave Paris. And we are also, um, we have so many of the institutions of the European Union nowadays in Brussels. The Court of Justice is in Luxembourg City, and the European Parliament spends its time between three days every month in Strasbourg, in eastern France, and the rest of the month in Brussels. Um, really, our economy is quite diverse. I mean, we we are still manufacturing. We are in nanotechnology. We are in food. That's probably the, the part that Americans know best um, for some of our specialty product. But we are in all kinds of, um, of activities. And obviously, being a small country of 11 million people and the size of Maryland, to give you an idea, we have to export. I mean, export is almost in the DNA of most Belgian companies, typically around, immediately around in, you know, the European Union, but and also in the United Kingdom, but also in North America, with the United States being the largest economical partner in the Americas for Belgium. But I will not talk too much about economics because being a federal country, we have the regions have powers and um, um, directions, you know. So there is a federal level and then the regional level. Economy is represented at the regional level. So I'm not alone here as an honorary consul. I have two offices of trade promotion and investment for Wallonia and for Flanders. They are both in Chicago. So I call that my team Belgium. Um, I think that really um, summarized. Obviously, we are delighted to have a royal family at the helm of the country um, as it brings less tension every four, six, seven years um, around us. So we have, of course, a parliament, a senate, and all the democratic institutions, as you well know. I think we have another slide, no? Yes, voila. <laughs> because it's, it's uh, I wasn't born honorary consul. Um, I um, actually, I, I can say because Don was going to say it, but I was born and educated in Brussels, Belgium. Um, I did um, Latin and sciences in high school. We did two years of law school at the Brussels University and graduated in hotel management uh, a certain time ago. Um, I um, worked in the hospitality and industry for two years in Belgium and France and Thailand. And then um, I had the opportunity during my studies to spend holidays in an American family in the Chicago area. And I must say, I felt in love with Chicago and it was a long time ago, but and it wasn't as beautiful as it is today, but it was already stunning and very exciting for a Belgian to come to, to Chicago. Um, 
they accepted me uh, as an intern in their, their own company dealing with nuts and dry fruits. They will celebrate 100 years in 2022. It's called John B. San Filippo Fisher Nuts. Maybe you know the brand of quality nuts, snacking nuts and cooking nuts, etc. But th this was my really opportunity to, um, to establish myself and to think that this is where I want to live and work. I returned to Belgium in 1985 so I could do my military service in the Royal Belgian Navy. I was on board on a minesweeper. Those were wooden ships that President Eisenhower had given to Belgium in 1960. And within the NATO fleet, the Belgian duty is to actually clear channels where they suspect to have mines or sea mines, which would, of course, be attracted to metal ships. But the wooden ship do not attract them. And so that was, uh, I, at the time, it was 10 months that I spent to protect the 60 miles of Belgian coast between the Netherlands and France and Britain across the channel. Um, and I returned after that um, to, um, to Chicago and to work with um, the San Filippo company. But what is an honorary consul? So Belgium, being independent in 1830, already in 1854, opened when the consulate general in Chicago it was a smaller town, the Belgian community was about 3,500 people, but all very active in businesses and different professions. Um, the, the reason why there was a consulate of Belgium here, general, is that the immigration from Belgium started obviously um, via the port of Antwerp on the Red Star line, shipping line and crossing into New York. And then from there, at the time, um, they would take the Erie Canal to the Great Lakes. And so the first consulate in, of Belgium in the Midwest was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, because that was the end of the steamship line, the Great Lakes steamship line. And uh, after that, with the train making progress from New York to Detroit, there was a there is a first cluster of Belgian immigration continuing on to Chicago and then splitting into two arms. The Flemish speaking people would be going to Moline, Illinois, at the request of the John Deere company, while the French speaking Walloon people of Belgium would go in the farming in Door County, Wisconsin. And that's the reason why, for the longest time, that we had a consulate general in the Midwest because of that immigration and the larger Belgian population. With the evolution of, I would say, the well-being in Belgium, and no need to, um, to actually apologize again, um, <clears throat> to immigrate, um, the population of Belgium living, Belgians living here in the Midwest became smaller. And so there were several waves of merging Primary, um, the Consulate General of Belgium in Houston merged with Chicago in 1991. And in 2004, it was decided that um, the Consulate General of Belgium would close in Chicago and Houston, Chicago would merge with New York. So my Consul General is based in New York. And unlike other Consul General um, in the Midwest, you know, they have typically 12, 14 states in their jurisdiction. My Consul General in New York has 24 states, which is huge, from Maine to Texas. So you can imagine. So we have to scream loud to attract his attention to Chicago outside of Manhattan. So the Consul General of Belgium closed in June of 2004. In the meantime, I had received a, a call from the, the last Consul General in Chicago telling me, because I will explain the, the formula that Belgium uses is a bit old fashioned. It says His Majesty the King has appointed you as honorary consul for the state of Illinois with office in Chicago. And of course, it's on the recommendation of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who himself received recommendation from the Belgian ambassador in Washington, D.C. Um, 
before that, I guess they all talk to each other to see who we should submit. And I guess that's how my name came. I was already established here since 1987. I also was active in an association that I created with other Europeans called Euro Chicago. So we were really um, comfortable dealing with the different offices of the different countries, etc. Just to let you know that an, an honorary consulate, actually in the Belgian terms, it's an unpaid position and there is no budget for from the Belgian government. But that's said up front. So they really suggest uh, creativity and uh, sponsorship possibilities. So what does an honorary consul? You may see us sometimes, you know, we've seen that we drink and dine constantly. Um, it's not totally wrong, but we do many, many things. The main goal of an honorary consul of Belgium is to really help Belgians who are either living here or traveling through the US and have lost a passport, need a new document, um, have a new baby declaration, you know, things like that. It's also the relation because to be the relay, the eyes and the ears for my consul general, and eventually even to the ambassador in Washington. It's also to keep good relations with the state of Illinois authorities, the city of Chicago, and in my case here, the Cook County authorities. Belgium, of course, is part of the, I mean, like all the 88 countries that have either a consular general or an honorary consulate. We are part of the Chicago Consular Corps. And um, of course, the, the pandemic has put uh, some strain on our regular gatherings and celebrations of national days and other opportunities. We, we became very well versed in Zoom like we do today. It's uh, certainly uh, not, um, not uncommon nowadays. So that's why I'm very grateful that we were able to do this uh, after work Rotary Club meeting uh, in this format. Uh, we had focused to do it in early September, but a terrible storm was looming on the rooftop garden of my residence in Wicker Park. And with Don Garner, we felt it was safer uh, because we wouldn't say like Dorothy, we are no longer in Illinois and be taken by a strong wind <laughs> above the roof. Um, so... I think I, I summarized um, everything. Again, as I told you, economic matters are handled by the regions. If you have a specific question, I would definitely, I can be reached and put you in contact with the two trade commissioners for Flanders and Wallonia. For the Brussels region, the trade commissioner is in located in New York City. Um, in terms of culture and tourism, it is also regional, however, as an honorary consul, I have uh, I was with the Fisher Nut Company for 25 years, exporting American processed nuts, snacks, and dried fruit to 50 or 60 plus countries. Um, but my real passion in life is the travel industry, the travel with a purpose, the slower pace traveling, the sustainable traveling. Um, really. Um, this was really, of course, not, not expecting <laughs> that we would be at a standstill for a while. Uh, so what does an honorary consul do? So, you know, we, I don't wear a tuxedo uh, very often on great occasions, but yes, this, uh, thank you for this slide. Actually, this is, uh, we also take part, we are in Wicker Park, so we take pride of being part of the community. And this is what we do once a year, uh, block and alley cleaning. Um, yes, next slide, please. So I, I am also, I have to ask the permission to the regions, but they are so busy with economic uh, activities that for the cultural part. So obviously some of you may be familiar with our national cartoon hero called Tintin and his dog Snowy, Tintin et Milou. And uh, he turned 90 in 2019. So there was an occasion to partner with the Alliance Francaise of Chicago, Naperville and North Shore to do um, presentation and book reading, etc. And I must say, I was amazed by the large at attendance audience that came to these and people bringing their book from their youth or their recent youth or 
from their past youth, really amazingly. So this was the kind of thing that we can do also. We participate to the Gene Siskel European Union Film Festival, where every country, we don't select the films. It is between the Gene Siskel Film Center and the um, promotion agencies of Flemish and French-speaking movies of Belgium. Next, please. So an honorary consul also is asked to attend different commemoration. This is um, this gentleman was in charge of Belgium. Uh, it's actually in Kennedy Park in the south side of Chicago, where every year we commemorate the Korean War. And Belgium was one of the 16 uh, allied nation. So I, if I am in town, I make a point to be present with my colleague, the Consul General of Korea and Turkey and India and all the other countries that participate in the war effort in Korea. Yes. But we also have fun, and this is actually with the Cirque du Soleil. Um, the, the Quebec province celebrate their Saint-Jean-Baptiste Day, Fête Nationale, and this was an event that actually we, they, they actually customed the event for their guests uh, when the Cirque du Soleil was in Chicago. Um, we do participate to many national days and different uh, countries have different options. And this is actually always very interesting and very enjoyable moment to meet the other colleagues, but also to meet uh, the representative of the state, the city. Those are moments where we can have a, a more informal conversation eventually. Next, please. Yes, so every year on July 21st, it's Belgium National Day, La Fête Nationale, Nationale Fête Stach. And uh, it's, it's since 1831. The date is the date of the taking of the oath of our first king, King Leopold I, on the constitution of Belgium. And it's titled to give you an it's King of the Belgians like the king of Greece was king of the Hellens, for instance. Um, basically, uh, it showed that unlike the king of France or the queen of England, doesn't get the power of the duty from God, but from the will of the, of the people. So uh, in 1830, it was a very modern constitution. So what I do is uh, I do on the rooftop, actually, the same rooftop, and uh, I invite guests. Uh, you can see Don Garner is a regular uh, because he, do, uh, he does enjoy his Belgian beer once in a while. He did study in Leuven, Louvain University. And uh, so I invite, I have to do a rotation because my community of registered Belgians is 652 people. So... I can tell you that when I meet my colleague from the Philippines or from Poland or from, um, you know, Argentina, I feel very humble uh, because, uh, yes, a, a little anecdote in 2010 um, that was uh, for the Belgian uh, presidency of the EU, our colleague, the Consul General of Mexico, did a little gathering and he was in the Consul General of Mexico in you know, on North Ashland, a very uh, large facility. And, and the question came, he says, well, how many passport renewal did you, do you do? I don't do those here in Chicago. It is done at the New York Consulate General level. But I had asked them and they said about, you know, maybe 1,200, you know, per year. Oh. And so I asked, why did I ask to the Consulate General of Mexico? Well, he said, you know, given... Every day we do about a thousand passports renewal here at the facility. And we also do, we have a driving consul that goes to Joliet, Waukegan, you know, other large cities of Illinois, and they do another 500, so 1,500 new passports a day. Of course, they have 3.5 million citizens registered with the Consulate General of Mexico in Chicago. Just to give you, you know, where we all stand, uh, I don't, I know that, my colleague from the Cape Verde Island, I don't know how many you have um, in your territory, but it's we are all in the good faith. We all go for the same goals. But obviously, the T has 120 employees in that consulate. Here, as you can see, it's me. <laughs> and of course, I, I don't do passport and visas, etc. So next slide, please. 
So I also support the Belgian American Club of Chicago activities. They exist since 1915. Um, the Belgian immigration in Chicago and the Belgian district was, if you are familiar with Logan Square and with uh, St. John Bergman's Church, which was the Belgian parish at the time, and the Belgian um, American Club Clubhouse was also on Fullerton. And basically, they, they have annual picnics. The, we don't celebrate, we celebrate Christmas, but for Belgian kids, it's St. Nicholas Day on December 5th. So I had to be St. Nicholas a few times. I dress up like a bishop, and the children don't recognize me. I'm still <laughs> amazed by that fact. And I address because I have a little list with their names, and we have an NL if they prefer to speak in Dutch or F for French. And so um, so those are the kind of activities. Uh, we will have a Belgian beer stew with beef and onions on the 17th of October at the Hopleaf, which is the only in Andersonville, which is really the only place that is not Belgian per se, but has a lot of Belgian beers and Belgian food uh, style available. Next slide, please. Yes. So thanks to TV5 Monde, it's a French language consortium of French television, Canada, Switzerland, and Belgium. I, of course, I can have the, the newscasts. Yes, of course, I also uh, stream online uh, the different newspaper in Flemish and in French. And the, but this is via the French. It's a French-speaking uh, newscast. I also can watch the Flemish newscast. Uh, online. Next slide, please. So yes, I'm also asked to feature um, Belgian product when they are new to market. Uh, they ask me to maybe host the reception uh, with, of course, the supplier financing it, but to use, you know, the different venues and to promote Belgium together with the trade commissioners, of course. Everybody is invited for that, for the good of uh, Belgian export and exposures of American people to our good beverages and food products. Next slide, please. So this is a 1991 photo. I mean, it's black and white. We had color photos already in 91, you know, as you know. But um, it must have been in my DNA because that year, uh, His Majesty King Baudouin celebrated 40 years on the throne of Belgium, and 60 he, he turned 60. And so on the left side, you can see Consul General Ronald Delange, who was Consul General in Chicago, and I had called him, just Paul, you know, I said, well, Monsieur Delange, what are we going to do for this incredible event? Well, I'm not sure. So we, I convinced Alliance Francaise of Chicago to let us use the building for one month. And of course, at the time, Alliance Francaise today is French and Francophonie. In 91, it was very Franco-Francais, as they say. But it did, and we had uh, one month of event, you know, from a lace maker flew in from Belgium. We had the tourist office of Belgium. We had chocolate tasting, beer tasting, movies, lectures on Belgian crystal and Belgian fashion. I really try to give in one month um, an, an aspect of Belgium. But in the forefront, you see this gentleman. His name is David Reiterfer. He happened to be my real estate agent and a good friend. And he had the body to to wear one of the national costume for Carnaval, Mardi Gras. And this is called Gilles de Binge. It's a city, it's a UNESCO treasure. It's a very sophisticated uh, costume, you know, with ostrich feathers hat. But if you look at the design, it's really inspired by the Aztecs. And the world, why would the Aztecs, you know, be involved uh, with a Belgian Mardi Gras costume? But that's because we were part of Spain. And so Belgium and Mexico and Argentina and Dominican Republic, we were all part of the Spanish world. And of course, the Belgian people were impressed by what they saw about some drawings and some rep rep reproduction of Aztec, Cree, Hispanic. Uh, decoration. Next slide, please. So we also do, of course, here it's with uh, Mayor Lightfoot at the 9-11 20 years anniversary commemoration. 
I was in Chicago that day. And um, I'm, you know, we, together with my colleagues here, we can see with the Consul General of South Africa and the, con the Honorary Consul of um, Bangladesh and Nepal, we uh, gathered for this quite emotional moment at 7 a.m. to match the time in New York City on Saturday, September 11. But this is one of the many um, we participate with uh, uh, different commemoration of really important, uh, even the Anzac Day, for instance, which is really Australia, New Zealand, etc. But we were allied in World War One, doing you know, although we did not participate against the Ottoman Empire, but it is part of our memory. Um, voila. Uh, I see that on the chat box there were a few uh, questions, but uh, maybe other questions came. Uh, Again, uh, Belgium is a democracy. We can talk about anything, almost anything. So we <laughs> um, uh -huh. open to questions uh, at your leisure. Yes, well, thank you very, very much. You know, I told you I was ready to listen <laughs> to your <laughs> presentation. So um, it was not hard to get ready for this with my Stella. Um, but um, which I understand is not the most popular uh, beer in Belgium. It's the one that I like. <laughs> yes, Stella, um, I mean, really the early brewing is 13, 6, 24, I think. It's, of course, one of the brands of a very large uh, brewing company called InBev. They own different brands and they merge with the Brazilian uh, Brahma to, make, to become a bigger. And of oh. course, everybody remembers when InBev, Belgium, Brazil brewery, merged with Anoza Bush. And uh, I always remember, because I, I was watching on television at the time, one of the two senators of Missouri um, mm -hmm. was on the steps of the Capitol Hill, and she was draped in the American flag, and she said, protect us from the Belgians. Well, maybe a bit <laughs> exaggerated. Uh, and, but the, the reality is for another Bush, from being a American beer drink in America, we now export it on the network of Stella Artois, and they go from South Korea to Chile and from, I don't know, Ronnie, if it's available in Australia? Yes, absolutely, and quite popular as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Consul, uh, thank you so Paul. much for, for a, okay, Paul, for your very uh, interesting uh, picture of Belgium. And we have a lot of questions here in the chart. And the very first one comes from Nita Nagobari, who asks us is if there are any um, events or festivals or holiday celebrate. What are the major holidays and events celebrated in Belgium? So, yeah, we, we have, uh, you know, Belgium is a um, European country with, as I told you, a very modern constitution. We have six recognized religions in Belgium. The, so the, the calendar follows the Catholic um, calendar of holidays, you know, with Easter and uh, Carnaval, Mardi Gras, etc. And, and um, yes, August 15 and uh, mm -hmm. All Saints Day and Christmas. But we also uh, have national holidays that represent either King's Day on November 15, which is my opportunity. I have two opportunities. I have the National Day on July 21st, which I invite the Belgian and Belgian-American community. I have a limit to the roof because I don't want to be in the news as a roof collapses in Wicker Park with a group of <laughs> Belgians. So we try to rotate, you know, the guests every year. But King's Day is really... Um, uh, the occasion to invite also the consular corps members and the uh, American authorities and American friends of Belgium, obviously. So that's the, the, the holidays that we have and festivals. The, the other religions that are recognized are the Protestant church, the Orthodox church, the Jewish uh, faith, Islam since 1973, and recently, we have added Buddhism because more and more Belgium are interested with Buddhism. That means that 
in Belgium, although we have a separation of state and church or religious uh, organization, we do have a minister in charge of the cult. And mm -hmm. the staff, from the cardinal to the mufti to the rabbi, everyone receives a salary, like a civil servant. Uh, they are all, but of course, different salaries, <laughs> but different. And also, if uh, the, I don't know, the bishop in Antwerp realized that the, there is a leak in the roof of the cathedral, he calls that administration and they send people to repair it. So that is uh, one of the Belgian way to say that it's part of our culture, that it's part of his historic buildings. Like when the mosque needed new rugs, obviously carpets for the a large space. So there was a bidding between different rug manufacturers in Belgium to, uh, to accommodate those needs. So that's the holidays and festival are around those. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so all the different communities that live in Belgium. Okay, so we have a question now, thank you, from Derek, uh, who is uh, being with us from Kampala, Uganda. And he asks if there are any community projects directly supported by the consulate or the government of Belgium in Illinois. Well, as, a, as an honorary consul without budget and salary, I do cooperate with any Belgian or Belgian American interested in promoting different aspects or to reach out. We do more group things at the consular, consular corp level, for instance, than like we were part of the Clean the Beach of Illinois last, that was two weekends ago, I think. So we went with the French on Montrose Arbor, you know, just to, to participate of that kind of things. On the larger scale, um, um, I, I would say not, not specifically, it would be more the Consul General in New York duty. And, but of course, it would be my duty to alert him on something that could be of interest for Belgium and for Illinois. Okay, um, so here Marshall is asking, if I am going to Belgium with my family, what are the, um, the main attraction we would not want to miss? Hmm. Being in the tourism industry, you can see this is music to my ears. <laughs> so I would be honest immediately, I would not go and promote Belgium for all beach resorts. Um, we have 60 <laughs> miles of the North Sea. For the Belgians, we love it. We rush to the sea, it's one hour drive, but that's us. I mean, for the rest <laughs> of the world, we say, if you are into museums, castles, Michelin restaurant, but not just star Michelin, Bibendom, Gourmand. If you like uh, nature, we do have nature of natural forest. We have wildlife. Uh, of course, we are 11 million, so you have to look very carefully where you go. But we do have <laughs> um, sporting events. You know, we had just had the bicycle uh, world championship. Uh, in Flanders, Belgium. Uh, we have maybe, if you like classical music, every year is the Queen Elizabeth of Belgium um, musical contest, where one year is piano, one year is violin, and one year is bel canto, and they uh, compete to, to win this prestigious prize. We, you know, America has the Oscars, France has the Césars, the British have the BAFTA, well, we have the Magritte of the cinema. And so oh, okay. we also have, you know, given year we produce between the Flemish and French speaking movie, maybe 20, 25 movies. Um, we are always welcoming foreign movie stars as well, just to give some new fresh blood in our pool. Um, but um, no, we, we have a very different activities. I mean, if you like cartoons, maybe you are familiar with the Smurfs. Oh, the yes. Smurfs are Belgian <laughs> since 1957. Yeah. Tintin has his own museum, uh -huh. you know, in, in Louvain-la-Neuve, 20, you know, 20 minutes from Brussels. If you like battlefield history, obviously the memory tourism, we have Napoleon and mm -hmm. um, yeah, the 1815, but we have World War I, which we ended four years of commemorations in the... Flanders Field in Ypres and that, that part. And then we have Bastogne in the World War II and the Battle of the Ardennes. Um, those are for people interested with this. We have, we have Roman ruins. It is not Pompeii, but we do have, you know, um, medieval castle. 
Um, we do have, uh, I mean, many activities actually. And for kids, we we may not have a Disneyland. It's Paris who got it, but we do have Smurfland and we have other <laughs> amusement parks for children. Uh, but the fact that Belgium is host to the EU and to um, NATO, that yeah. means we have, uh, most countries will have three embassies in Brussels, one for the bilateral re relation with Belgium, and then one to the EU and one to the NATO, because you have the member of NATO and then the satellite members of NATO, that's 52 countries. Sometimes it's the same ambassador. I think I know very well the ambassador of El Salvador. Well, he represents El Salvador for Belgium, for the EU, and for NATO, right? because it's relatively a smaller country, so it's easier. But uh, we have three American, and well, we should have three American ambassadors appointed, um, and in in Brussels uh, for that reason. So, uh -huh. well, uh, so Marshall, you should be going there soon. Um, Eric is asking, uh, what would you say is the best Belgian restaurant in Chicago? Yes. Um, I'm always envious of my friends and colleagues in Washington, D.C., in San Diego, <laughs> California, in New York City. They have authentic Belgian restaurants. Here in Chicago, we never had one. There is one called uh, the Belgian Inn, and uh, it's actually my home. And I, because I, I, when I did, uh, I said, what can I do to make a difference as an honorary consul? I can't compete with my colleague of Japan or or, um, or the colleague from Australia and New Zealand, you know, and, and uh, even from Egypt, you know, and they have such a diverse. So I, I like to cook. Um, I like to say that Jenny Craig is not my friend. And um, <laughs> basically, um, I present Belgian beer tasting first. And if somebody does not like beer, which I can understand, I have also wine and non-alcoholic beverages. And uh, I cook Belgian meals, very balanced, to make sure I have a recipe from Flanders, one from Wallonia, and one from... I, I extend outside of Brussels region, the province of Brabant, the, the central province. Um, and that's why, you know, I invite other Americans, a Belgian couple, and sometimes another, another couple of diplomats just to get the conversation going. And that's authentic Belgian food. But it is not Michelin, it is bourgeoise, cuisine bourgeoise. You know, that's what <laughs> my, we cook at home. Uh, it's not a restaurant, uh, it's a home. And it's very comfortable, and we love conversation. Mm -hmm. Today, actually, I was almost running smiling in the street. The sky is gray, it's drizzling. I felt just at home, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> yeah. a moment. Um, so yes, there is no the, the hop leaf, if I may say, is the only one that has Belgian inspired, not just mussels, but also sausages and because our food really is an influence. You can imagine where we are in Europe, influenced by France, and where we they use wine, we will use beer traditionally. We cook French food as well, but we. Um, also, we are inspired by Germany and uh, not so much by the Netherlands in terms of cuisine, but uh, <laughs> we, love, we love the tulips. <laughs> so we bring tulips from there. Well, I, I think I have like one of the last couple of questions that is yeah. coming here. Um, what can you tell us about how the chocolate making started and how it became yes. so famous? Well, as you can tell with our location in Europe, we don't grow cocoa beans mm -hmm. in uh, Belgium. Yes. <laughs> but as you know also in mean, its history, it's, uh, we were very involved in Central Africa in the, in the Congo. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was cocoa, cocoa bean trees. And of course, we also learned from Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire, and from Ghana, the former Gold Coast. So we received trees, you know, and start producing cocoa beans. And um, the cocoa beans made their way to Antwerp. The, it was Antwerp and Hamburg and Rotterdam, where the three, we used to say, denre colonial, long time ago, the, the, the tropical crop that we kind of grow here. So this was the entry, the coffee, the tea, you know, all these uh, uh, crops that we cannot grow in Europe. And Belgium got interested with chocolate. So at the beginning, it was just chocolate blocks, you know, but in 1847, luckily, a gentleman named Mr. Neuhaus came from Germany and settled in Brussels. 
Oh, and the original <laughs> store is still there. It's a national treasure. I think yeah. we all worship it. And he, he has, of course, has many, many, we don't say copycat. We just had other inspired chocolatier, chocolate maker. And, but the, the, really the Belgian idea was instead of, you know, the big block and you eat is not exactly, is to make the praline. And the praline existed in France because of the Duchess of Pralin, who wanted an easy, snack to eat in the 18th century. So our chef created a la praline, but it, it was not with chocolate necessarily. So we use that name praline and he start making things that you can eat in one bite or two, if you are stoic enough not to eat it in once. <laughs> and so the diversity of chocolate, um, you know, it, of course we know the famous names that are even across the Atlantic, Godiva is one, the Hose, Leonidas, all these brands. But in Belgium, you have probably, I don't know, hundreds of local chocolatiers. They make enough to cater to their neighborhood, you know, to smaller town. So chocolate is really an art de vivre. And we do like, I prefer to have three peas of a good chocolate versus a kilo of something that's more confectionery than chocolate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. also we like dark chocolate, that typical, um, yes, Cornet. Um, yes, yes, Cornet. Uh -huh. There are three Cornet, three brothers. Cornet Toison d'Or, Cornet Dynasty, and uh -huh. Cornet, the third one. Anyway, though they are part, and they're very, Family owned, uh, I agree. So uh, the Swiss, you know, the other chocolate maker country yeah. in the world, um, they used more milk. Obviously, they have access to a lot of milk in the Alps. And mm -hmm. so they do a different type of chocolate. So there is really room for both uh, chocolate maker. That reminds me, and it's a little aparté, but the late Donald Rumsfeld, he was very upset at Belgium at one time, uh, we, you know, and he said, "Oh yeah, Belgium, the chocolate maker country." <laughs> what our minister responded, "Do you describe Korea as a dry cleaning country?" <laughs> that, that gives you an idea of Belgian humor. You know, it's not politically correct, maybe, but it's uh... well, it's very refreshing, I have to say. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, um, okay. One more question. This is so yeah. in interesting. So entertaining. Uh, let me see if I, if I see another, but would anybody like to ask directly a question Please. to Paul? Yes. Yes. Roni. It's not really a question. It's a comment. My yeah. late pseudo um, father was an Anglican priest by the name of the Reverend Russell Avery. He was located in Lille in France, and his pseudo brother was located across in the border in Belgium. Um, and they have wonderful memories of the yeah. 1990s of being based there. Beautiful food, beautiful culture, but the Belgians, absolutely wonderful people. I lived in Thailand, so this this saved my life also during the pandemic. No shaking hands to anybody. Oh. Anyway, but thank you for this comment. <laughs> okay. Well, Paul, thank you so, so much for being with us today. And, um, well, you know, I... I am encantada. I hope we can take a rain check for a gathering in your rooftop because uh, we were so disappointed that, okay, the skies had a plan that we didn't have. So No, I know, I know, I know. I, I forgot to say also that Belgium, you know, um, because we are a small country and we have three official languages, um, to graduate from high school, you must be trilingual either French and Dutch, the major, and then the other language, and English. To be a cashier person at Juul or at Walmart, you must be trilingual in Brussels. If not, you don't even get the job. But then luckily, they, um, there was an option to give us a fourth language, not mandatory, extracurriculum. There was two hours a week after school closed. So then the options were Russian, because we were certain the Red Army would come to invade us and we could talk to the soldiers at least if they came in. Then there was German, Italian, and Spanish. And I felt, well, you know, the spa, the wife of King Baudouin was Queen Fabiola de Mora y Aragon. And I said, well, I will take Spanish. And we were only two students in the classroom. 
So it was like a private class and for three years. And the teacher would bring us sangria and tapas and magazine. <laughs> Imagine, uh, really. So luckily, when I came to Chicago, oh, I use Spanish every day. I mean, almost every day. I mean, I had to, <laughs> of course, make some uh, um, uh, toning to the, for instance, the Argentina, Colombia, or Mexico. I always felt, felt so funny when they said, Mira la troca. What do you mean, troca? It's a truck, <laughs> it's a camion. But it's so very interesting you know, to learn the details <laughs> from the Dominican when I speak with Zordine, Consul General uh, Castillo Remis, you know, and sometimes she used expression from the Dominican. It's still interesting. But I want to say that because learning languages in as an honorary consul in international trade and in tourism is such a key. It should not be dis disregarded, I think. It should be really continue to be supported because it's it's convenient. Absolutely. You know, I am 100. Yes, I am 100 percent with you. And I think languages should be taught not in high school, but in preschool and kindergarten through elementary school. Yeah. You know, but here we do it the other way around. And um, yes, you know, we had our daughter in international schools for several years. And, you know, everybody speaks three languages. It's just so normal. And so yeah, I, I do participate, you know, with uh, um, Instituto Cervantes, with uh -huh. La UNAM, also with um, uh, Alliance Francaise. I mean, anytime I can, you know, share and with the students. Also, normally on May 9th for European Union Day, all the on, you know, European Union Council go uh, to a high school, Chicago high school. We are allocated a high school to talk to the student to see how important it is to mm -hmm. to use language. But then I could speak for six hours, so we... Well, Paul, we have one last question from Nita. Uh, so, yes, yes uh, uh, we have a few announcements to make after that, but you know what, we okay. are extending the time you're speaking. So, Nita, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thanks for being here, Council. Uh, just wondering in Chicago, if we want to experience a little bit of Belgian culture, is there a neighborhood um, where you say, oh, there's many people from Belgian origin? Or no, get I mean, a feel in, of that? in the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, yes, there was Logan Square and uh, Logan Boulevard. Today, you see a few buildings, a few marks in stones. The, you know, I have 652 Belgium. You don't have to be registered as a Belgian when you live abroad, but it's highly recommended if you need a new passport or a new ID, because if not, you are in trouble. Wow. But Belgians tend to blend in, in a way, uh, compared to um, maybe other nationalities that have very large groups. And having lived in Thailand, I'm very uh, regularly with the Thai community. I'm always surprised when they have those um, festival, you know, the Lantern Festival, oh my God, with 25,000 people show up. You know, that's very <laughs> impressive. If I get 80 Belgians or anything, <laughs> super excited, you know, it's, it's all depending on the, we have other cities, New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and then many retirees in Southern Florida, uh, from Belgium have larger groups, but um, yeah, so there is really not Nita, a, a real area like, for instance, I, I cook a lot and I don't limit myself to Belgian food. So I will go to the Thai grocery store. I go to uh, Devon Avenue to Patel Brothers for my spices and, and my oh, wow. mm, Bombay mix and everything. And um, Voila. So when, when we want tea, it's obviously from Fortnum and Mason. I mean, we have a very particular, <laughs> we can settle for less, huh? obviously, if it's not possible. But we do, Belgian will travel for food, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's awesome, thank you. Well, thank you so, so much. Uh, this has been really fun to hear. Thank and you. you know, what we need to do with you after on another occasion is to party together because we are a happy group here. So I'm sure, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> we will certainly, you know, include you. And well, as a token of our ap appreciation, we are going to send you this uh, certificate that you see on the screen. Um, so we are very grateful for the time you spent with us and Thank we you for the very opportunity. much 
Yeah, so thank you. Uh, you know, we, we thank you too. And we're very lucky to have Don, uh, who connects us with so many of his council friends that um, uh, were nice to have you. And also, we invite you to stop by and visit us in one of our meetings because uh, we have a very interesting programs. Um, yes, uh, I attend okay. sometimes your lunch program online. Yes. You know, when you the lunch programs, yes, I yes. have attended if I can, yes. Uh huh. Well, I tell you, the invitation is open, so we'll make sure that Don will tell you, you know, Paul, you should come to this one. <laughs> OK. Oh, he does. Trust me, he does. He's very, <laughs> he's very um, diligent in <laughs> sharing yes. this. Uh, and it's very nice. You know, it's, it's just that know that activities are finally stepping up again, you know, yeah. after 18 months uh, of hibernation. Mm -hmm. um, it's um it's exciting, actually. Uh, voilà. All right. Well, Paul, thank you, everyone. Big, big thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, and to continue with the program, my friends, um, what I have, I have some announcements to make, and um, we are. Uh, is Sarah here? Uh, maybe she's not. Uh, for those of you who sign up for the in-person volunteer project at this at the uh, on October at Simeon Career Academy, uh, the activity has been postponed for one week. We'll send an announcement. So if you couldn't make it this coming Thursday or Friday. Um, in the gyrator, we're going to have the information for the following week. So we would love to have you, um, a group of us is um, going to be there. So you're welcome to come. Um, then uh, one thing um, that Paul may be interested in attending when we have it, uh, we, I, I am calling for your um, participation in a planning committee for a, an Argentine wine tasting event we are going to be holding in February of next year, exactly February 17th. And um, that is to, <coughs> uh, it, it is a fundraiser for the Rotary One Foundation as well. It is uh, we're going to reach out to potential members, tell your friends to come and join us because it is going to be a very good party. And we are going to be celebrating this with the contribution from the Argentine Consulate in Chicago as well. So, um, you know, I am looking for hands to help with this. Um, most of the work I have to say is done. The contacts have been made with the suppliers. Um, and um, yeah, so come and join the fun of making this event happen. So you just send me an email and we'll start talking about it. All right. Uh, for next Tuesday, we, it is going to be a hybrid meeting. So I hope I see some of you in person at the lunch because we have a uh, district governor jane hopkins uh coming to visit us and at the same time we have a rotarian from california that is coming to visit and his daughter as well as some friends and he is planning to make his daughter a paul harris fellow don't tell anything but it is a surprise to her so i only tell this on zoom all right, but uh, so come and join this a very special moment in this family's um, uh, life. So uh, I look forward to seeing you. We're going to be meeting again at the Heritage Room, which is this beautiful room on the second floor. And, you know, 1210 to 120 as always. Um, so and after that on November, on October 19th, as you as you know, that is the week uh, where we celebrate World Polio Day. And we have a uh, Carol Pandak, who is the uh, she works at Rotary International. She is the director for uh, Polio Plus. And Carol is going to have the latest information about what is happening with polio in Afghanistan, Pakistan, how um, the debacle in Afghanistan affected the polio um, uh, vaccination uh, and what is uh, so what is going on in that part of the world and as well as where are we going with the campaign. As you know, so far this year in 2020, we have 
two cases of polio in these countries. So it is really a, as it is a conflictive time for that part of the world, it is extraordinary that no more cases have emerged. So the African continent continues to be polio free as well as India. And you know, uh, it is almost like this miracle is almost at the tip of our fingers, which means we still have to continue fundraising for polio and this is the time to do it so we are going to tell you how to do it stay tuned all right and after that on uh, on uh, october uh um 26 we have father medard Lass, who is a friend of david hirsch and he is going to have a very interesting um, talk about um, the organization he created, which is called Joyful Again. So he is going to be on Zoom, but both Carol Panda and District Governor Jane are going to come in person to our meetings. So make sure you come and join the lunch because I would love to see you in person. All right. As you know, if you bring friends, um, vaccination proof is required. Um, you know, uh, usually the protocols are that, you know, if you wear a mask, you know, it's optional if you're vaccinated, if you haven't. Um, um, you know, being vaccinated, you have to wear a mask always, but we at Rotary One go a little step further because we want everybody to feel very comfortable. So vaccination proof is required. If you have shown your vaccination proof in the past to a uh, Tamra or um, Karen, uh, you don't have to do that again because, you know, we have you in the list. All right. And now I would like to see, um, Let's see, we have uh, Derek uh, visiting us again from Kampala. Derek, before we close, would you like to tell us what's happening in Kampala? Um, just a brief um, summary of what's happening in Kampala. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to um, thank um, the consul Council General for coming through this evening. It's been it's been um, a wonderful feel of Belgium. I mean, I was there for a couple of days in August just recently, and um, I must say, enjoy, I enjoyed the couple of days I was there. Um, and um, well, now back to Kampala. <laughs> uh, we, I can say, we are not doing badly with um, um, with the COVID numbers because. Um, the vaccination program is going on. It had stalled a, couple, a, a little bit because um, maybe of um, maybe um, of um, uh, maybe ad admin issues, but we are getting the vaccination drive back again. Um, right. Of course, we are not really We are not really vaccinating a lot because of course population of maybe. 18 million who are um, in the bracket of vaccination, uh, less than 3 million had been vaccinated two weeks ago. So um, the drive is just picking up again. But of course, uh, we're having events um, that are allowed of up to 200 people. And um, um, schools are still closed, just churches are open and um, in general entertainment places are still closed. So um, we are just, you know, hybrid economy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we, we are hopeful that things will be uh, better in the next couple of months and we hope for the best. Well, thank you very much. I have to say that since we became friends in Facebook, I was following your trip to Europe. I was so jealous. <laughs> you hit all the cultural spots that I would have liked to visit myself. So oh, yeah. <laughs> it looked like you had a great holiday there. <laughs> I did, I did. Okay, all right. Well, is there anything you fellow members would like to share before we close? I guess not. Well, so I'm almost done with my Stella. <laughs> and uh, before we close, um, well, Derek, since I have you there on the screen, would you like to read for us the four way test? Oh, yes. Um, so Thanks. the uh, the four way test um, of the things we think, say or do um, first, is it the is truth? The truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Concern? 
Third, um, will it build goodwill will, and will better, better friendships? friendships. For uh, fourth, will it be will beneficial to all concerned? Concert. Thank and you. And maybe Eric. will it be fun? It will be fun, right? <laughs> yeah. And well, it's always good to see you here and keep coming, bring your friends. And um, uh, well, I have to say it's been a delight seeing all of you tonight. And I hope to see you next Tuesday in person. All right. Take care. Good night, everybody. And Paul, big thanks once again. Merci. Thank you all. Je vous en prie. Au revoir. Hasta pronto. Hasta pronto. Bye. Thank you.